us to the 10th episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2023 GCE Science Paper Team. So if you haven't seen the other episode, please consider going to our YouTube channel. you find the playlist that contains the solution to all the questions in this paper. And remember the aim of this channel is to give detailed explanation to the questions in every exam paper. It's not just about giving you answers, but helping you to understand this. By understanding that you'll be able to ace your G12 exam. Question B6 leads define the term more. So in this case, we're just expected to define. What is key is when defining is indicating that it is in the standard D unit of particles. And this is correspond to the Avogadro's constant. In those two need to come out. So a more refers to a standard unit of particles. It so this is an extension, it corresponds to six multiplied by ten to the power twenty three particles. You find this on the periodic table. When you go to the periodic table, in case you forget, you discover that we have this number. Particles called Avo Gadros constant. You do that, you are good to go. Question B The concentration of sodium hydroxide solution is. Calculate the number of moles of 0 0.25 moles per decimeter cubic of sodium hydroxide solution contained in 250 centimeter cubic of this solution. So we are given the molality, which is molality is given by the number of moles divided by volume. So we've been given molality which is this one. Then the question wants us to calculate the number of moles that is contained in this molality of the solution that. So we also be given the volume of the solution. So you can find the number of moles by just now doing cross multiplication. So what we know is number of moles is equal to molality which we are given multiplied by in volume. Now this volume need to be converted to decimeter cubic because you see number of moles per decimeter cubic. Then in one decimeter cubic we have one thousand centimeter cubic. So what we need to do is one decimeter cubic is equal to one thousand centimeter cubic. Then we are looking for how many decimeter cubic are in two hundred and fifty centimeter cubic. So we just do cross multiply them. So I'm going to have 1000 x is equal to 250. Remember the, the cubic will cancel because these are cubic centimeter cubic centimeter so will cancel. So what this tells me is I divide by 1000 divided by 1000. So I'm going to remain with it. x is equal to 0 0.25 decimeter cubic. So this is the volume. It now becomes easier. The number of moles is equal to molality is 0 0.250 zero, or let me two five moles per decimeter cubic. Then multiply by volume, which is 0 0.25 decimeter cubic. So what you notice is this cubic and this cubic. This is a cancel. So just the same as in this one multiplied by that one which is 0 0.25 moles multiplied by 0 0.25. Once we simplify this one we are going to end up with 0 0.0625 moles. So these are the number of moles that are in this solution. Once you do that you are good to go you get these two marks. Question C. 
Iron metal is extracted from an iron ore called emmatite in a blast furnace during a reduction reaction using carbon monoxide gas as a reducing agent as shown in the following chemical equation. So we've got this chemical equation. Calculate the mass of carbon monoxide gas required to reduce 3200 kg of iron 3 oxide in the blast furnace. So the question requires us to calculate the required mass of carbon monoxide. So the first thing that we need to check is the chemical equation balance. The fact that we've got these numbers, it is balanced. Then let us slide the ratio. So we have this ion, 3 oxide, then we need to compare it with carbon monoxide. So this is there's a one here, then here there's a three. So when we have one more of iron three oxide, we we'll require three moles of carbon. Now we need to know how many moles are in 3200 kg of iron, which we we'll put here. So we'll put here a number, then we need to say how many moles of carbon or monoxide will be required. So it's that principle that we are going to use. So we know that the number of moles, let me write here, is given by mass given divided by relative molecular mass per mole. So what we need to do is we need to find the relative molecular mass of this and this one by using the periodic table. So let us go to the periodic table. Once we do that, then we we'll convert this to grams. Once we convert this to grams, we know the number of moles of iron 3 oxide that we have. Then once we do that, then we can use this proportion or direct relationship. Then we we'll find the number of moles in carbon monoxide that we require given that. So we go to the periodic table. We are looking for this to this. That's what we are looking for. So, iron, when you go to the periodic table, you find that iron is in this one. So, we have a 56, but there are two, so it will be two times in 56, then plus oxygen, there are three, so it will be this, which will be three times 16. When we add this, what we are going to end up with is 160 grams per mole. Then we need to do the same for carbon monoxide, which is in CO. So in this one, we have one carbon, which is 12, plus oxygen, which is in 16. So in this case, when we add this to him, we are going to end up with him 28. So 28 grams per mole. Okay, this is what we have. So we found what we are looking for then we can easily go back and now start solving. So how many moles are in this? But this is in kg, those are in grams. So we know that one kg is equal to 1000 grams. So just multiply by 1000 that to convert it to, to grams. So we're going to have 3, 2, 0, 0, then plus 3 zeros. These are grams. Then we divide by, we just found this one to be 160 grams per mole. So this is now becomes 160 grams per mole. So what you notice is this gram and this gram cancels, then we can just divide them. So 160 into 3,200,000. This will give us 20 southern D moles. So we have 20 southern D moles. So there are 20 southern D moles in 3200 kg of iron 3 oxide. So what we do here, we put a 20 southern, then we cross multiply. So it will be x times 1 to be just x is equal to 20 multiply by 3, so 3 multiplied by 20,000, we're going to end up with 60, 
south and mons. So what we need is the south and mons of carbon monoxide. So we know the mons of carbon monoxide. So now the next step is to convert these mons to grams. What we need to do. So now for this case now we know the number of mons of carbon mono monoxide then we know the relative molecular mass they were looking for the mass so to find the mass what we do is just multiply now mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by of carbon monoxide like that so the number of moles are 60,000 then we multiply by we just found this to be the case so these are moles let me just write them in full so these are moles then we are multiplying by 28 grams per mole so what you notice again this one and this one cancels then we remain with him 60 southern multiplied by 20 80 grams so we are going to end up with him 1 million 680 thousand grams then we need to convert this to kg to convert this to kg we divide by 1000 remember what we did now we are going for so 1000 grams so we end up with 1680 kg so in this case converting to kg because 1 kg is equal to 1000 grams so now we are looking for kg in this 180 like this grams 1.68 million grams so once you do that then you are good to go you get these full max so this is how you answer this question to get the two max though it has two max the workings takes a bit of time how i wish it could be given maybe four max because of the work involved so thank you for joining me in this episode and if you are new to this channel don't forget to hit subscribe button and if you find this video to be helpful please indicate in the comment section and don't forget to join me in the next episode as we look at question B7.